I just wanted to say a couple of words about uh, what I see as uh, um, uh, both a, a challenge in terms of global health as well as an exciting opportunity, uh, particularly in, in the field that I'm especially interested in being uh, uh, genomic medicine, which is really the application of genetic and genomic information to tailor the diagnosis, uh, prevention, and treatment of diseases for individual patients. And I think a major challenge will be how we can use uh, the information uh, that we're generating both to uh, advance the science of medicine as well as the delivery of healthcare, uh, both in, in countries like Canada, uh, where a lot of this work is taking place, but also in uh, lower and middle income countries. And, and I think as with the other speakers, I really feel that uh, as Canadians, we have both a, an obligation as well as an important opportunity to really advance uh, uh, the global health uh, through this type of work. And so I think one early uh, way that uh, genomic medicine will be making an impact is in the field of pharmacogenomics, which is really the use of genetic data to uh, uh, tailor treatment uh, in order to both avoid uh, adverse drug reactions as well as to maximize the efficacy of drugs. And so typically the scenario now when we uh, prescribe a drug to a patient is that we tell them they may have a 10% chance of having an adverse drug reaction. But we know that our patients are really a heterogeneous population. Uh, although we lack the ability to, to uh, and know specifically which patients are at highest risk. And so by using uh, genetic information, we can really dissect out those patients that are at extremely high risk of having an adverse drug reaction for whom we may choose to use an alternate medication or a different dose, uh, as well as patients at moderate risk and those that are at low, low risk who we can safely uh, tell that they uh, uh, do not have a significant risk of having a specific adverse drug reaction. And so Colin uh, Ross and Michael Hayden's lab used this approach uh, uh, to study hearing loss asso associated with the chemotherapeutic agent cisplatin and identified two uh, genetic variants that were very strongly associated with uh, deafness in this group of pediatric patients. And so if you carried uh, one or other of these genetic variants, you had a, over a 90% uh, chance of developing severe irreversible deafness in response to this medication. And one of the projects that I'm now involved with, uh, with Michael Hayden, is uh, to understand how variants in these genes, as well as others, uh, contribute to deafness in adults treated with these medications. And cisplatin is, uh, is an important chemotherapy agent. It's uh, inexpensive. It's used by over a million people worldwide every year. And up to 25% of patients, uh, of adult patients that receive this medication will suffer uh, permanent deafness. And so I think studies like this really have the opportunity to make uh, uh, treatment with this medication both safer and more efficacious. And as we think about the application to global health, of course, cancer is, is really a, a growing epidemic in the developing countries. Currently, uh, the global burden of death from cancers actually outweighs those of uh, uh, HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria combined. And uh, uh, surprisingly, perhaps by 2020, 70% um, of new cancer diagnoses will be in low and middle income countries. And so this really presents, I think, a challenge just as we think about how will we treat these patients uh, in um, resource poor environments in which therapy will generally be done in an outpatient setting and there may not be resources to monitor closely for adverse drug uh, reactions. And so by using genetic technologies, I think we really have an opportunity to make uh, the delivery of treatment for these diseases both safer and uh, ultimately more efficacious. Um, and so that's really all I, I wanted to say uh, on that side. Um, again, it's just a, a real privilege to get to be part of the announcement uh, today. I think uh, investing in young scientists and young clinician scientists is really a tremendously exciting way for us to advance the global health agenda. And, uh, and absolutely, I think it's something that we need to move forward with.